Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am DIYing a shady lady tree or a black olive tree. I've been wanting to tackle this project for some time now, so I'm so excited to share it with you. A huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Later, I'll be sharing how we get back to school ready with some quick and easy Cricut projects. It's gonna be a fun video, so make sure you stick around. So I have been wanting one of these trees for quite some time. They have a really large price tag. They are difficult to have indoors. I have heard, I just don't want to take a chance on such an expensive tree that I don't know if it's gonna do really well in my home. So I thought I would do some research and possibly DIY one. They do have this faux black olive on Pottery Barn. It's about $400, but it's still pretty small, but that's always a good option if you're not a huge DIYer. So I'm gonna take a shot at DIYing this. We definitely had some limbs on the trees in our backyard that needed to be cut back a little bit so it was the perfect opportunity to grab one of those limbs. So, so once I have the limb that I'm going to use I'll kind of stand it up and get an idea of which limbs I want to remove and which ones I want to keep. Now this can be tricky. I tend to leave more on because you can always take them off later than, you know, risk taking off too much and then wishing you had them. And depending on what type of tree you are making, definitely make sure you do your research to see kind of how limbs lay, how they fall, um, just so you can kind of maneuver and work with the type of limb that you are using, if that makes sense. So. Um, a lot of the little branches I will cut again, but not too much. So I definitely remove all the leaves and you can also give it a clear coat of spray paint once you get all of your leaves off, just to kind of, I don't know, lock that in and possibly get rid of any bugs or little things that you don't want in your house. I leave my limb out for literally like a couple days. Um, just to kind of, I don't know, let it dry out and let all the bugs kind of leave. But I have never really had a problem. I've made several trees and I have never had a problem with bugs or anything in my house. So this is going to be the base of the tree. I'm just using a really cheap kind of nursery type pot. It did have the little holes in the very bottom. I'm gonna put cement in this so I didn't want the um, cement leaking through the holes. So I'm just putting some foil and some tape and that'll block the holes. So I'm just using this fast setting quick read. This stuff sets up and dries really fast. So I love that. So I'm just going to dump my dry cement in and I'm going to fill it up probably about three quarters of the way. I like to make sure that that base is really solid so I don't have to worry about anything falling over or it being wiggly and then I'm going to throw in some water and mix it up. I think I put a little bit too much water so I had to dump a little bit out but it mixed up fine. It has been triple digits in California lately mixed with a little bit of a hurricane, a little bit of tropical storm that just missed us so we are thankful for that but this should set up in no time. In the meantime I wanted to share with you guys some quick Cricut projects that I have been using to get my kids back to school ready. I have my Cricut Design Space open. Cricut Design Space is a free software and it's super easy to learn. I have links to these exact projects in the description below. You can customize them, add your own names and your own logos, but they are there and ready for you. Once I have my designs ready to go in Cricut Design Space, I can now load my mat and my preferred material. I love using Cricut's own smart materials. They are just the best quality in my opinion. I've used a lot of other things and nothing compares to the Cricut materials. I'm going to be making some school spirit shirts for my boys and I'm using my Cricut Maker 3 and the Iron On Vinyl by Cricut. I love using my Cricut for projects like this. I feel like it just takes things up a notch and the possibilities for projects are endless. I have used this so many times for school things, school projects. We've used it for birthday parties, events. Cricut has definitely been worth the investment in my opinion. So I am just weeding out all of my design cutouts here. These have all been cut out already so I'm just going to peel back all that excess, remove the little centers using my little Cricut weeding tool that helps so much. 
So I don't know about you guys, if you guys have kids or not, my kids love wearing their school spirit wear. Uh, when it starts getting a little bit colder, I want to do some sweatshirts and little hoodies. But um, yeah, they love wearing their school spirit and showing their school spirit. So this is a perfect and affordable way that we can create those looks and make it a little bit more custom too. So here I'm using the Cricut Easy Press 3 and I love this so much because you can make the custom t-shirts. It does the heat. You can use their custom heat guide, which helps you know like what temperatures to use and how long. Um, I definitely wash my shirts just so that they have the best outcome, but everything lays so nice. I used the Cricut Iron On Vinyl here and it turned out so beautiful and I love that it lays really flat. It doesn't make things really raised, if you know what I mean. I have made numerous shirts. I think one of my most favorite sweatshirts has probably been washed hundreds of times and it still looks great. I'm also going to be making a water bottle with some fun school colors on it. I'm using the Smart Vinyl that is permanent, made by Cricut. I designed this little layered look in Cricut Design Space. That one is also linked below. So it kind of has a little layered look with the white and yellow and the little paw I'm gonna be using for the O. So it's gonna be a little layered look. I'm just gonna use my transfer tape and put that right on top of the other white letters that I have kind of acting as the background. I'm gonna use my little pressing tool and it just makes sure that it gets on really good and then you pull that transfer tape back and it's almost ready to go. I'm gonna use a little alcohol wipe, make sure I get any lint or dust off and then I'm gonna peel back that transfer tape with the logo on it, stick it on my water bottle really well make sure that I use that little pressing tool and get it stuck on really good. And then once I get that up, I can apply the paw and it'll have that kind of 3D layered look. I love it with the blue. I think the blue and the yellow, they just pop, everything pops. It looks super cute. I love this idea, not only for the kids, but it could also be given to a teacher, maybe with a little Starbucks card as a little gift, a little thank you gift or teacher gift, or even a coach gift. The possibilities are endless. I'll also be using the Easy Press and the Iron On Vinyl to add names and name tags for lunch boxes, backpacks, and even jackets. Be sure to visit Cricut.com and check out all of their amazing products. So now that my tree is dry, I'm going to set up this planter that I have. I actually made this one a while back. I will link that video here if you're interested in making that planter. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this tree in. If you also notice our little golden retriever mix we have running around, we did get a new puppy over the summer. Um, he is a rescue and he is a lot of energy, but we love him so much. So I'm just gonna plop that little cement pot right in the planter. These are the branches that I used and I ordered six boxes. They're about $17 a piece, give or take. I will link these exact ones below. So forgive me, you guys, this is kind of how I envisioned it. Um, and I just kind of set the branches. That's why it looks super messy because I kind of just like to get a visual so you can see the branches like hanging down and everything in there. So I like to see um, how the greenery looks before I cut anything. I definitely want to check out lengths and make sure I get the right length of the branches. So everything kind of looks a little shoddy <laughs> when I envision it in the beginning, but then I just kind of go from there. So for prior trees, I used a lot of hot glue, which I still highly recommend. But for this type of tree, I ended up drilling a lot of the branches directly in. I actually didn't use any hot glue at all, which there might be a couple things that I still do want to hot glue. I just haven't gotten around to it. But for the most part, I just cut these branches down. I used a pair of wire cutters and just bend it back and forth really good and then the wire snaps um, right through. You can cut that branch quite a bit shorter because I didn't need a lot of that excess. So I cut it down quite a bit and then I just using my drill, drilled that hole and then stuck that branch directly into that tree trunk or tree limb, whatever you want to call it. 
So this took a little bit of finagling because I was trying to figure out the correct drill bit size to use. So I will tell you which um, drill bit worked for these branches for me perfectly, um, the correct size. I think I have it later on in the video. But then once I got the branch in, I just kind of fluff it and move it around. So the style of these trees, they are very almost shelf-like um, and the branches, they kind of have a very minimal, simple, but layered look. So they kind of come out from both sides of the tree trunk, but they are just very simple trees. So there's not a lot to them, which I think makes a good DIY type tree. So, and there I am removing um, some of the excess limbs. Like I said, it's better to have more and be able to remove them later than not have enough. So I did kind of want that layered look on the side. So I kept the ones that would make good kind of resting branches to let those fake branches rest on the real branches so and when i said that i would hot glue um, there is that little piece right up there where i cut the limb and i would hot glue that piece right onto there um, just to get it to stay so it kind of rests on it if that makes sense So from that point on, it was pretty much just drilling holes and then placing the branches in the hole. You can also hot glue inside the hole if you want to secure your branches really well. I felt like these branches were in there really good, but I do have soccer balls and baseballs and things flying around my house all the time. So we will find out how secure those branches are, but completely up to you. You can see I kind of wrapped around the faux, around the real one, and I just really utilized those real branches to rest the fake ones on. So um, I also have a lot of ones that aren't secure in there. I just kind of wrap them in and see how they look before I secure them. So this is the drill bit that I used to make the holes in the tree trunk for those faux branches. It is the quarter inch drill bit. And then this is the 7 64ths, I think that's how you say it. And then I just use my Heart Brushless 20 volt drill. It is the best and my favorite drill. It's super easy to use. So as I got towards the top of the tree, the limb starts to get a little bit thinner. So that one quarter inch drill bit does start to get um, really large for the top, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna start taking off um, a little bit of that rubber part, almost like you're doing like a wire cutting or um, what do they call it, wire stripping. Um, so I'm gonna take off some of that rubber and just expose the wire so that it makes it a little bit thinner to use um, in the tree, if that makes sense. I'll show you guys in a second. So instead of having that really thick branch hanging off of the top of the tree, um, these are just thinner to work with. So visually, I think it just looks better and a little bit more realistic uh, to have like kind of a thinner type top on the branch, if that makes sense. So here you can see the tree is really starting to come along. I'm just gonna add a few branches where I feel like it's really bare or too big of a space. So I'm just gonna add a little bit extra in there to cover up some of those really large gaps. The nice thing about these branches are that they have a lot of wire in them so you can really shape them and bend them and twist them and get them where you want them and need them. <laughs> How many times did I just say them? But they're good. And for the bottom of the pot, I always think it looks so finished and nice to just put some moss. Of course, I've got my little helper there, not doing a lot of helping, but I just Put a lot of these recyclable bags to just kind of fill that empty space um, and yeah it gives the moss like something to rest onto you can even put the moss on a little bit of cardboard um, that fits the top of your planter so i will link as much as i can for you guys in the description the moss the video links the craft links using cricut i will link all of that but for now i am super happy with how this tree turned out it's exactly what we needed in that corner 
I love that I can get the look for less. I don't have to spend money on a super expensive tree and then stress out about keeping it alive. So this works for me and my family and I can change it out whenever I want. Cost of this tree came in at just under $100, which I feel like is a pretty good price for the size of it. It's probably at least an eight foot tree and it fills this corner really, really well. Let me know if you try this project. You can always tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your guys' projects. And with that, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.